This video is brought to you by Alexa and Blue, this week's news patrons. There are two schools of thought when it comes to buying an ex-charter boat. The first is usually, don't do it. Um, it's like buying an ex-rental car that's in rougher shape than, well, an ex-rental car. On the other school of thought, though, you should do it. Maybe. But here's what you need to know. Hey guys, before we get started today, you might notice I got some new digs. I'm working on like a new recording area in my house and there's this uh, extra bedroom. So here we are. I've got like the shelves going on behind me, which are very barren and almost empty. Um, and uh, I got lighting I'm working on. I have some things on order. I have all these acoustic panels that I have to hang up everywhere. So the audio might not be very good right now. The lighting might not very be very good right now, but I'm working on it. More stuff coming tomorrow. And I want to do something. One of my favorite, personal favorite channels on YouTube is called Answers with Joe, this guy. And I love his background, and which you can kind of see where I got some of my inspiration from. Also, he has a little section on his shelf that's devoted to patrons. So anybody who's a patron can send him a little knickknack or whatever, what have you, and he'll put it on the shelf behind him. And I'd like to do that too. So if you're a patron or becoming a patron, and you want to send me something that represents you in the background of these videos, let me know and I'll shoot you my address. The market is flooded right now with these charter boats that are like coming up for sale in places like the British Virgin Islands for way cheaper than they probably should be. At least on the surface, they're cheaper. These boats were rented out by charter companies to people who want the adventure of cruising in a tropical paradise without the risk of bringing their own boat down there. Basically, you could spend a few thousand dollars, usually per couple, to go down with your friends and rent a nice sailboat. Like the Sun Odyssey 410 that's for rent right now. You can opt to have a captain come with you and sort of drive you around. That'd be some local that has local knowledge, which is nice. Or for most people, you can save a buck and you can captain it yourself. So you get to sail around with complete freedom all over the tropics for a couple of weeks. Now it all sounds great because you don't have the risk of your own boat. You can just sort of fly in, enjoy the boat, and when you're done, drop it off and fly home. This means, however, that these charter companies are always competing for your business, so they need to have the newest boats they can possibly have. Five years is usually the lifespan for a charter monohull, so we see them come up for sale pretty regularly, and sometimes you can get a really good deal if you're in the market for a five-year-old boat. But it's important to know that charter companies don't always own these boats, however. Sometimes they do, but more often than not, the boats are actually privately owned as sort of an investment boat. Basically, if you're so inclined, you can buy a brand new boat and basically just hand it to a charter company for five years. So the money made while renting that boat out, a lot of it goes to pay down the cost of the boat, the original sticker price that you're paying for. And at the end of the five year run, you can walk away with a five year old boat that maybe you couldn't have afforded otherwise to buy it outright. Or at the end of the five year run, it can just be sold and you can walk away with some money. Now there's an important distinction here because the privately owned charter boats where the charter company doesn't own it, it's an actual person. Um, the owner themselves is a lot more involved with the maintenance and upgrades on the boat over that five year run. The owner is actually invested in the five year outcome of the boat and they'll often insist on top tier maintenance or better upgrades. Well, a boat that the charter company owns could be neglected. No one at the charter company is really invested in the five year outcome of this boat. Nobody really cares. Now let's talk about some pros and cons here. First and foremost, the number one reason to even bother looking down this road of buying a charter boat is you can get a lot more boat for your money if you buy an X charter. Imagine for a second if you want, let's say, a five year old monohull that's well equipped and well capable of Caribbean cruising, maybe about 40 feet. Five years old, what would that run you? 200 grand? 250? 300,000? Well, check out this Sun Odyssey 389. This is a very typical charter boat. This is a 2017, so it's got all the latest and greatest stuff that you likely just saw at the boat show. We even get a fold down transom, which is still a huge luxury even now. We get a huge cockpit with twin helms, and you have sunbrella covering everything to keep you out of the sun and comfortable. 
we get a modern interior that's nice and clean and a good layout you can live with. We have all the regular radios, we have a fridge and a freezer, freezer and all this stuff, it's only a few years old. Everything here looks clean too and well maintained. It doesn't look like it's been rented out for five years. And we get all this for $139,000, which is amazing for the year of this boat. It won't even be ready for new standing rigging for another five years. Now I've found similar boats to this in private ownership going for $200,000, $220,000, almost $100,000 more. Also on the pro list, is these charter boats, most of them, are maintained relentlessly. You have to remember that no one makes money on a charter boat that's broken. Every time the boat comes back in, most charter companies have a diver on staff that will immediately dive on the boat to inspect the undersides. They're looking for wear on the, uh, on the prop, on the anodes. They're looking to see if it's been run aground and things like that. And they have marine mechanics and electricians on staff at the charter companies to go through these boats constantly because the boat is in constant use. Anything broken is identified and reported right away. I mean, if you just drop six grand to spend a week on this boat and something isn't working right, you're going to make sure they know about it. Also, because these boats never sit very long, nothing really rots or goes bad. I've seen so many boats that are privately for sale that have been sitting at the dock for years. I mean, the owner might tell you they use it from time to time, but not being used, they sit there and they're riddled with problems like bad fuel clogging up everything in the diesel track or the black water systems and they crack and they break as soon as you start trying to use them regularly. It's all too common to buy something where everything works at the dock when you go see the boat. But as soon as you start living aboard and using it on the day to day, everything starts to break down just from lack of use. You get dry rotting plastics and rubber parts. When is the last time the impeller was changed? Or the dinghy impeller? Or the joker valve? When's the last time the seacocks were fully articulated through their range of motion? One of the companies that owns two of the biggest charter companies down in the Virgin Islands is said to have anywhere from $1 million to $2 million worth of spare parts in inventory, in stock, for their fleets because downtime is not an option. Everything is immediately replaced or repaired when it breaks and no expense is spared to make sure the boat stays in operational condition. Now compare that to a privately owned boat. I've heard a lot of people say if 80% of your systems are working, you're in pretty good shape. And that's pretty true with most sailboat owners. This may not work that, the, you know, the faucet in the head doesn't work, but the one in the galley does. So that's where we brush our teeth. Things like that, 80% is pretty good, but these charter boats need to be 100% working because people are paying good money to use them. Now, usually when you as the buyer enter into an agreement to purchase a charter boat, you go through what's called a phase out period. That's where the charter company phases it out of chartering and toward private ownership. And they will at that point complete a survey. And you can use that survey to negotiate the price or the cost of the repairs down when you're going to buy the boat. And the charter company will often opt to repair anything wrong with the boat to maintain that price that they were asking for. Um, and then when they say it's done, usually you will hire your own surveyor, this is a whole second survey, to repeat the survey process. So you can buy the boat with full knowledge of its condition and make sure they fixed what they said they were gonna fix. It's been gone over extensively by them and then by you. And there's a whole process that's been ironed out to actually make buying one of these things a lot easier than it sounds. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make these videos possible. I really couldn't do it without you guys, and thank you to all the patrons that have gotten us this far. If you'd like to help out and support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. So maybe those are some pretty compelling arguments to look at charter boats. I think that they are, but why would you not want to? For starters, there's two very big reasons that you're probably already thinking of. With all the maintenance they do, it's because the boats are in constant use. The five years that they're in use is often the equivalent to 10 or even 20 years of the typical private ownership use a boat would see. It's all too common to see really extensive wear on things like the cushions or the sunbrella on the Bimini or Dodger, as well as even bent stanchions and bent stanchion bases, chafed lines everywhere, scrapes and rubs from hitting the dock or stains from spilling rum in the cockpit. And the people renting these boats, not to look down on anybody who has, but as you can imagine, some of them have not invested in the outcome of the boat. 
and they're much more likely to run it aground or bounce it off the dock. And also these operators, when they rent the boat, they're on vacation. So their level of give a is very, very low. Um, you won't often see them sort of circling the anchorage for half an hour to find that perfect anchor spot that has sort of good wind protection and allows them to swing without crashing into anybody. Usually they just rock up and drop the anchor off the bow and open a sundowner. So you get things like nicks and dings and cosmetic imperfections, and that's very plentiful, um, as well as a charter company won't be bothered to really fix things like that. It's cosmetic. Uh, wear and tear happens with so many different people using the boat, so you're going to have to be willing to live with sort of a five-year-old boat with sort of 20 years worth of wear and tear, just the little cosmetic things. And the second major big issue you're going to have with trying to buy one of these boats is they're for sale where is. Um, which means the boat is probably in some tropical paradise somewhere and you're going to have to come and get it or you're going to have to pay a fortune to hire a captain and a crew to go and get it and bring it home to you. It's not going to be sitting in a neighbor's yard or something. This also means that your negotiations with the charter company are largely going to be done by email. I mean, you might think you can call them, but island time, probably not. And you're often never even going to see the boat until the day you fly in to take ownership of it. And then you have to do things like fuel it up and provision it and figure out how to get it home, come up with some sort of a chart and plan and what you're going to do. The time you have to take off work just to do all that stuff can quickly make up the money you saved by buying a charter boat in the first place. Here's another one. This is just four years old. This is a 2018 Beneteau OCNS 38. This is a nice boat in what looks to be in pristine condition. It's even a two cabin layout. Often charter boats are split cabins. There'll be three cabin or four cabin and different rooms means more people aboard and charter companies don't charge by the boat. They often charge by the person and more rooms means more money. This Beneteau is in excellent shape and $149,000 for what was easily a $300,000 boat five years ago, you really are getting a lot for your money here. This kind of money usually gets you something at least 10 years older than this. Here's another one to look at if you want that brand new boat feel in just a four year old boat. If you can stretch just over $200,000, this is a Bavaria Cruiser 41. And this is a far designed hull, so not only do you get that fancy hotel room feel inside, but under the waterline, she's going to be well behaved and relatively fast. When you get inside this boat, you can feel the 13 feet of beam on this 41 footer with huge space. And it's set up as a two head, three stateroom layout with lots of room in between for that day to day life. You also get the tankage to sort of keep you going. You get 55 gallons of fuel. 55 of fresh water. This is by all measures just a really nice boat and the huge money you're saving by buying it as an X charter can go a long way toward the things that you want like solar panels or a water maker, the things that help you meet your cruising goals. It's also expertly maintained very very well and it shows. Ultimately when it comes down to buying a charter boat two things come to mind. First get a survey, an independent survey that you pay for yourself and not a surveyor that the charter company used. It might be difficult to find somebody independent if it's down in the islands like the BVI, so keep that in mind. Can you afford to fly somebody in if you need to? Can you afford to fly there just to see the boat ahead of time? Also, I would think it much easier to buy something like this if you're the type of person, sort of like me, who doesn't mind doing some work in the long run. Being an ex-charter, I'm sure it's going to have lots of fiberglass imperfections, so somebody who's handy with glass can probably make short work of it. Also, somebody who owns a sewing machine and isn't really afraid to use it, you're going to find the cushions and the sunbrella, all those coverings are going to be worn in the first five years to the point of probably needing replacement by the time you buy it. If you aren't afraid of reupholstering, then this sort of purchase kind of makes sense. Personally, I love the new age memory foam mattresses and fight me in the comments if I'm wrong, um, but I don't even own a conventional spring mattress in my bedroom at home anymore. These Walmart sort of foam mattresses with a memory foam top with a bamboo cover, they're so extremely good now. They're easy to sleep on and they're cheap enough that you don't mind cutting them up to match the shape of the beds in the boat. So it's kind of a given for me now that I don't care what sort of foam mattresses are in a boat at this point. 
A charter boat also makes a lot of sense if you're just going to take it cruising right away. It negates that location problem. If you don't have to come back home to go to work and the plan is just to fly in, provision the boat, and head out into the gin clear waters of the Caribbean, by the time you're done with the purchase and all the surveys, all that's left to really do is fuel it up and go, which is kind of nice. If you're boat shopping right now and you need help, I do consulting now, and if you'd like to, you can book an hour of my time by heading over to ladyksailing.com forward slash consults. If you just want to talk boats, you can jump on the Lady K Discord. I'll leave a link in the description. We usually have a text channel going where we ask random questions, and then a voice channel where we stay up and drink rum and talk about boats. That's it for this week, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about buying a charter boat. Would you do it? Would you not do it? What are the arguments that I missed in this video? And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss anything. Until then, keep the heavy side down, but not too far down, because if it's too far down, then you're sinking. You got to watch out for that kind of stuff. I will see you guys next week. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.